Well, it's, it's no surprise, really, that people have been turning to nature in such a big way in response to this crisis. And if we look at history, um, it's, it's, it's a recurring theme, you know, uh, during wars, following wars, following natural disasters. We need to turn back to the land and nature's powers of restoration and natural beauty is very sustaining to us. So, so it, it's something that's happened before many, many times over. Um, and as you mentioned, the pandemic has opened up the divide, the, the social economic divide between those who have gardens and those who don't, because for people who have them, they've been able to appreciate their gardens more than ever before. Um, and I hope that in some measure that might lead to an understanding of how restorative uh, gardens can be for mental health and, um, you know, lead to um, things like horticultural therapy being taken a bit more seriously. Yeah, well, let, me, let me just ask Ron, because I want to get back to the psychology and the statistics with you in a second, yeah. Sue, but I want to ask Ron, uh, who's joining us now from Los Angeles. Um, Ron, you call yourself the gangster gardener, and it's, uh, you know, you've done something in LA that probably probably nobody did. You have turned verges of highways and various land into thriving gardens. Why did you decide to do this? What sort of led you to that place? Real simple, beauty in, beauty out, and how, how are you? Um, because people think health is just what you put into your mouth, and it's not. Health is your environment. Health is what you see every day. Health is, can you smell beauty? Can you look at beauty every day? So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to beautify my community.